Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics. In today's video question line, we're going to be covering radial hole patterns as datum features. And today's question was, per the attached file, datum A is determined by a radial hole pattern. I have three questions. First, how do you set up the datum reference frame during manufacturing and CMM inspection? In other words, where is the origin point or the 000 point? The next question was, how many degrees of freedom does this datum reference frame lock down? And then lastly, how do you apply the MMB, or the Maximum Material Condition Boundary? Thanks for your question, Alan. Let's go ahead and dig into it here. Here's the attached file, and we can see a pattern of four holes who have a diameter of six millimeters, and we can see a pattern of five holes who have a diameter of eight millimeters radially around this part. Uh, the pattern of five holes is being identified as datum feature A, and so that is all five holes simultaneously acting as a single datum feature that locks in our degrees of freedom. And we can see here in this feature control frame, we're referencing that datum feature at the MMB condition. There are a couple things missing from this drawing that I'll just point out really quickly. Uh, we are missing uh, basic dimensions for the radial hole pattern itself. Um, now there's five of them, they look to be equally spaced, so we can safely assume that 360 degrees divided by five is going to be our basic dimension between those holes. And we're missing basic dimensions between all of our other features as well as the uh, dimensions and controls for the outside perimeter, but we can ignore those for now and assume that we know the basic dimensions based off of the CAD model. Uh, we're also missing a size dimension here, uh, and by that I mean the tolerance. Uh, we're missing the tolerance value, and if we go to our title block, we can uh, make a bold assumption here that maybe for this example we have a plus or minus 0.1 millimeter tolerance uh, for this feature. So we have 8 millimeters plus or minus 0.1. Um, for this example, we'll, we'll assume that moving forward. So for the first question, uh, how do you set up the datum reference frame during manufacturing? Uh, and the short answer is however you would like. Uh, so you can set your zero of your machine. Uh, if this is in a mill or a lathe, you can set your zeros wherever you want. There's no rules as to how you do this. Um, but it's important for the interpreter, the manufacturing engineer, the CNC operator, the CNC programmer, um, anybody that's involved in creating this product, that they understand that the uh, when they manufacture the pattern of four holes, that they need to have good relative location to the pattern of five holes. Uh, that's exactly what the feature control frame is telling us. And so the short answer is however you would like to, but just know that you need uh, the center pattern of these holes uh, located to this pattern here. And we'll kind of dig into that a little bit with the CMM. So what the CMM is going to do is inspect to make sure that manufacturing accomplished this. And the CMM, if we're going to look at this part here, let's ignore for now the MMB modifier. What the CMM is going to do is when you take a point cloud of each one of these cylinders, it's going to expand a cylinder inside that point cloud. And that cylinder's origin, right, it's going to start at the axis, the true position of each one of these. So we know exactly where the true position of each one of these holes is relative to each other. Uh, it's going to expand a cylinder on each one of these axes. And it's going to expand that cylinder. All five of these cylinders are going to expand simultaneously uh, until this part kind of settles in on the high points of each one of those cylinders. So you can picture all five of those slowly expanding, and then uh, maybe the smallest couple holes will stop the expansion, and that part is locked down, right? Uh, and so we've locked in that part on this theoretical datum simulator. And they're expanding because we assumed the MMB is uh, being ignored right here. So ignore that for the time being. Those cylinders expand until it captures the high points of all five of those simultaneously. That is our datum simulator. Um, and when we do that, we're able to get a 0, 0, 0 point right here in the middle of all five of those cylinders. And again, those cylinders had an origin when they started expanding uh, at their true positions. And so that gives us a 0, 0, 0 where all five of these converge. And we can see a Z axis going vertical. And then we can picture our X and our Y. Again, they'll be perpendicular to each other. However we want, we can have X going out this cylinder, or we can have X coming out this cylinder, and then Y is obviously perpendicular to that. So we can establish our 0, 0, 0 point, and then locate and orientate everything else to that datum reference frame. So this datum reference frame that we show here uh, does lock in six degrees of freedom. If you picture all five of those cylinders slowly expanding 
until they can't expand anymore simultaneously. One's going to stop before the other ones do. Um, once they do stop, we've controlled all six degrees of freedom. We can no longer disengage from those cylinders and we can't translate up and down. We can't rotate. Um, another way to look at it is if we have a single cylinder, just expand that single cylinder until you reach the high points. Well, that single cylinder as a, as a lone datum can lock in four degrees of freedom, but it leaves translation along its axis free and it re leaves the rotation about its axis free as well. And if we introduce a second cylinder simultaneously, we can see that since it's at an angle from the original cylinder that it can stop this translation. It has some level of location this direction. And so it can stop that translation that this axis could not. It can also in the same way stop that rotation that this axis could not. And so as we see that these two cylinders, since they're not um, parallel to each other, can stop all six degrees of freedom. Now, if we picture all five of them simultaneously, we certainly can lock in all six degrees of freedom here. So the answer to number question number two is we can lock in six degrees of freedom with a pattern of radial holes. So kind of an advanced concept here, definitely hard to manually inspect and a little bit trickier to picture with a CMM, but that's exactly what it's going to do. It's going to expand all five of those cylinders. Again, we're assuming MMB is closed out here um, and it's going to give us a zero, zero, zero right in the middle. Now, if we're going to assume the MMB is being applied, you apply the MMB right after the datum feature, and that's because our datum feature is a pattern of features of size. And it's going to be interpreted uh, that we get datum shift uh, when the feature exists beyond the MMC of our feature of size. And so our MMC of our feature is eight plus or minus 0.1, like we're assuming, which gives us a MMB boundary of 7.9 or the smallest diameter. So what we can do is picture all of those cylinders expanding in their locations inside this part at all of these locations. But once they hit 7.9 in diameter, they are done expanding, right? And so you can see that if each one of these holes existed at, let's say, 8 or 8.1, um, there's going to be a little bit of uh, clearance between the datum simulator that stopped at 7.9 and the actual hole. That means this part can sort of rattle on all five of those pins. And now that rattle or that movement uh, can be datum shift. We can shift this part a little bit on our datum simulator to get these features in tolerance. So these features get bonus tolerance based on the MMC modifier. But they also get a little bit of datum shift where we can shift the entire part uh, to get, get them even closer to being intolerance. So that's how you apply the MMB and how the CMM or the fixed functional gauge is going to be interpreted. Hopefully that answers your question. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for GD&T information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand GD&T on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our GD&T community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our GD&T and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by training experts.